Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to go over chapter four, which talks about ethics. So first of all, what do we really mean by ethics? So ethics, we can define it as about what is right and what is wrong. So it is not necessarily what is legal, what is not legal, but it is about what is right and what is wrong. And in the book, uh, or the book mentions several examples of recent cases that have failed the ethical judgment in businesses. And one of them was the Volkswagen uh, company, which is the car company that we all know. And uh, so they basically covered up and they used an information system device, they call it the defeat device, in which, which changed actually the reading of the gas emission or the EPA uh, emissions. So they lied for decades about that. Uh, then they finally were discovered uh, or exposed, and it was a bad reputation for them to lie about their gas emission. Uh, another example is the Wells Fargo. They manipulated their, their mortgage uh, terms, and they also uh, forced their auto loan holders to buy unneeded insurance, and they were exposed later. The same thing for General Motors. Uh, they had the they covered up or they uh, they lied about their ignition switches of their cars. And, uh, and more than 114 people died as a result of those uh, switches, uh, in, in ignition switches in their cars. And the same thing for the Dakota Corporation, which is basically, uh, it produces airbags for cars. And they were actually exposed later on uh, because they covered up for their uh, airbags that they were faulty. <clears throat> And actually, they went. Uh, they are bankrupt by now. I believe they went bankrupt in 2017. Uh, those are just some of the examples of the companies that have, have been uh, or they failed the ethical judgment in their businesses. So, information systems actually creates opportunities uh, uh, for for companies, either in the dark side or in the, the bright side. So, for example, in the in in the bright side, um, as social media empowered those who were not empowered before. For example, um, information technology or social media has um, improved the social change. For example, the Me, um, Me Too um, movement or Black Lives Matters. Those are some of the examples of the social movements that have been changed as a result of uh, of information technology. And uh, there has been also a threatening to existing distributions of power, so they cancel culture, and, and just an example that have been empowered by, uh, by information technology. And there are so, also new opportunities for crime and new kinds of crimes. So in the past, crimes would be uh, you know, physical, but now uh, they can be digital. For example, ransomware that I've uh, given as an example, uh, which is a way hackers would um, take over an information system of a hospital, for example, and then they would encrypt all those files that the hospital uses for treating and transacting. Um, and they would encrypt those files and will not uh, release this, the, those files to the hospital until they pay a ransom money, which is paid through uh, uh, digital currency, right? Like Bitcoin and so on. Uh, those are just some examples of the new opportunities for crime uh, using information technology. So uh, some of the models that we can, uh, for thinking about ethical uh, issues, uh, so you can think about information technology as a rock that was dropped in the middle of a calm pond. So it has ripple effects on several uh, aspects of life, like ethics, social, political issues, just kind of to name a few. And this is a great representation of what I meant here. Uh, so for example, the BitTorrent that uh, people use 
to download uh, videos. And those videos, when they are downloaded for free, so then uh, actors and uh, movie pro pro producers, they are not motivated to produce those because everyone will have access to them for free and they are not making money. So then we are, as consumers, are going to, to lose because there is no motivation for companies and, and uh, those uh, artists to, to produce such artistic work. And this have, has ripple effects on us as individuals, on society, on populations, and from different aspects as well. So that information rights and obligations, property rights, system quality, quality of life, and accountability and control. And let's talk about each one of those. So information rights and obligations, um, which refers to who has the right for the information that is collected about consumers. Is it the consumer themselves? or the organization that is collecting that data. And the property rights and obligations, this includes property right, copyright, uh, uh, for example, piracy um, or software piracy, right? That's that's a, one example of property rights. Accountability and control, who is going to be held accountable for such violations of ethical issues? And system quality, can we tolerate some systems not to function 100% and quality of life? So some of the trends that have raised ethical issues is uh, what we call it the Moore's Law, M-O-O-R-E. Uh, Moore's Law uh, is basically saying that the, computer, the computing power will double every 18 months, and also the price of storage will re decline as well in those 18 months. So this is uh, what uh, has been a trend and it has been true so far. And uh, so a computer that has been there in the 50s, um, now a uh, small telephone can have as much power as the supercomputer that was there in the 60s. So that tells us that uh, the processing or the computing power has doubled every 18 months and now it is uh, it is very um, large. So another concept that we need to, uh, to, to, to think about is the data analysis that has been empowered by, by analytics and uh, companies actually benefit from it is the profiling. So they, they analyze data to the point where they collect data from different sources in order to create a profile about a certain kind of customer or consumer, about each one of us. So they collect data from social media, from transactional transactions that we do, for example, when you buy products from Amazon or from, from Walmart, and uh, your employment information, credit card information, um, listing, online listing, and, and all of that. So all of this kind of information is, is combined to create a profile about you. So uh, there is a new system or a system called uh, NORA or Non-Obvious Relationship Awareness uh, System. This was uh, uh, actually used in 2002 uh, or started to be used in 2002. And originally it was uh, designed for casinos, so they can see who of those of their customers who he, he has criminal backgrounds. So what it does, it 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 creates, it combines data from multiple sources to find hidden connections about that particular uh, person. Uh, if that person has criminal records, or or the government also uses it, and the private as well as the public uh, organizations use this system to find out more about um, certain people. So for example, the United States government uses it to uh, trace terrorists, for example. Uh, insurance companies use it uh, to decide if a certain person is going to default in their loan. And um, insurance companies, whether it is car insurance, health insurance, and so on. And casinos as well use that system. And this is how this system works. It collects data from watch lists, from incident arrest systems, customer transaction systems, telephone records, human resource, resource records, all of that. And then it, it sends real-time alerts when, for example, someone um, you know, uh, 
uh, reserves a ticket and that someone has a number of terrorists, for example, in their list. So then that will alert, that alert will, will show up at the uh, National Security Agency and then they will uh, do something about it. So there are some basic concepts that we need to uh, be able to define. So responsibility, what we mean here by responsibility is meaning that we as an individual uh, accept the response, the consequences, the costs, the obligations, and the duties of the decisions and actions that we do. Accountability refers to a mechanism that determines who is responsible for which action and, and decision. And then liability permits individuals and firms to recover damages done. The same thing for due process is a legal way to allow the individuals to appeal. So there are ethical analyses, uh, steps, process that people need to go through. And an example of this is uh, there is a case uh, in the book, in this chapter about 737 Max uh, Boeing uh, that happened or incident that happened. So uh, what happened is that uh, Airbus, which is the competitor of uh, Boeing, had a new air, air, airplane that was very fuel efficient. Now, as a result of that, uh, Boeing wanted to counter uh, that compet competition by establishing or, or building a new aircraft that is smaller than what they had in terms of uh, 737. And, um, but they wanted to cut corners by utilizing or using the same engine of the a bigger version of that, that air aircraft to put it in this smaller aircraft, which took space from the wings of the aircraft. So in that, that made it not balanced. So it used to kind of tilt upward. So they what they did is they decided to use sensors uh, in the in the nose of the aircraft. So and it can be read by by a software and then that will make the aircraft kind of balanced, right? And go back to normal. So it will push the nose of the, uh, that software will, uh, through the sensor, will push the nose of the aircraft to be straight. So when they, they, they uh, uh, released those aircrafts, they didn't do enough debugging or enough testing to their software and enough training for pilots about how to operate those new uh, aircrafts. So they, they created a short video you know, to explain what is the difference between this aircraft and the previous version of the aircraft. And they provided them with a handout about you know, the differences and, and how to operate it. Uh, so those was the training for pilots, but uh, in terms of software uh, testing, the Aviation Commission was short-staffed and they, asked Boeing to self-certify that sir, that software. So they got some fresh engineering, engineering majors who just graduated to, uh, you know, to test that software and it passed, but, uh, but they didn't test it enough. So they released the, those aircrafts and they started actually selling them. And a lot of uh, companies actually reserved you know, several of those aircrafts, uh, you know, given uh, Airbus or Boeing more than almost billion dollar sales. But they, uh, so they released some of those and one of those aircrafts fell nose, nose headed in, in uh, Jakarta, Indonesia. And that accident killed all passengers and the pilot and staff almost 189 uh, passengers and, and uh, pilots and staff. Uh, another same incident for the same model, which is uh, Boeing 737 MAX, happened also in, in, in Ethiopia. So uh, more than 150 uh, people died in that incident as well. So by, by looking at that incident, 
or accident. Now let's uh, conduct this five-step process for ethical analysis. So identify and clearly describe the facts. So the facts is that the same model had the same accidents and by being nose-headed and uh, the pilots were not uh, able to override that demand for the aircraft to, to go down nose-headed into the ground. Um, and then the conflict and the dilemma what are the higher order values involved. So people's lives were involved here and people died and those people have families, they have uh, relatives that care about them. So we need, that's kind of what we uh, mean here by the, by the high order value. <clears throat> So I'm identifying the stakeholders. So who are the stakeholders? We need to differentiate between stakeholders versus stockholders, right? Stakeholders, everyone who is involved, uh, who has a relation, uh, relationship to this incident. So it can be, uh, you know, the victims themselves. It can be the relatives uh, of the of those victims. It can be the company itself, Boeing. It can be the the company who bought those aircrafts. From, from Boeing and includes the government, the US government, include other governments, it includes competitors, it includes the software engineer, it includes the CEOs, and you know, a lot of people who were involved uh, and had something to do with this incident, right? And contributed to this incident. So identify the options that you can reasonably take. So what are the options that you can take is to stop the production of this, uh, or the sale of these of these aircrafts, uh, and as a result of that, actually, which happened, almost fifty percent of the stock market of uh, Boeing went down. Identify potential consequences of your options. So the consequences, this might affect also the U.S. economy. Might affect also Boeing might go bankrupt if they if they uh, they are not selling, uh, and but also they need to compensate the victims families for the, their losses right uh, so candidate for ethical principles so we have the golden rule do unto others as you would have them do unto you so when we judge when we we, we have an ethical issue we need to put ourselves in that situation and see what we would we have done if we were in that situation what we want people to to say about us if we were in that situation. And then Kant's categorical imperative. This refers to if an action is not right for everyone to take, then it is not right for anyone. So for example, if everyone lies, you know, we talked about uh, uh, George Santos uh, in, in, in Congress. So if everyone is George Santos, they lied about their lives, they know about, about themselves, about things, and if, if every senator is lying, then we will lose trust in our senators and then it's not going to be good, right? So then it should not be right for anyone to lie. If, let's say, everyone steals from the companies that they work in, then the company would go bankrupt and we lose business and there will not be any business anymore. So this is what we mean here by Kant's categorical imperative. So slippery slope rule. We, it refers to an action that cannot be taken repeatedly. Um, so uh, it, it is not right to take at all, right? So what we mean by that as an example would be if em an employee steals from their company every day, they steal money from their company, their, their company is gonna lose business and then they will, be, they will not be existing anymore. So it's, that's what as, as an example if repeatedly right but if someone maybe needed one dollar you know so maybe people can uh forego or let let go or, you know needed a dollar or so for a pepsi and then want to return it later you know but if it is repeatedly then that uh, that's gonna affect the business and that's what we call a slippery uh, slippery slope pool utilitarian principle so this is when uh, you take an action that ach achieves the higher or greater value. So uh, one example of this is 
replacing the assembly line workers with robots. So this is achieving greater value because you are increasing the production of that company, but also you are increasing the safety of the employees. So because a lot of accidents happen, things or uh, tools or machines fall on, on people and then people die or who are uh, working in the assembly line, now you are replacing that with robots. So you are improving safety uh, for people. Uh, risk aversion uh, principle. So this is where you uh, you take an action that produces the least harm uh, or potential cost. So as an example of this risk aversion principle is if you are investing uh, your your money, would you invest it in let's say in a saving account or in in the futures market? So the futures is more risk risky while uh, in a saving account, it is more uh, less risk, right? And uh, the ethical no free lunch rule. So what it, this really means is that you should expect when when you, you receive um, tangible or intangible objects from others, from a person, you should always expect that, that this person is entitled to com to be compensated for what they give, right? Uh, so for example, Facebook provides us with service uh, that we use for networking, for social networking, and they are providing this uh, to us free of charge, right? But they are entitled to be compensated for it. So we don't pay them in money, but instead they are utilizing our uh, personal data and for advertising or whatever they 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 use it for, right? So this is just an as an example of no free lunch. So some organizations they uh, or several organizations they have code of conduct or um, they self regulate and they have co code of conduct that kind of uh, use as has principles and that they need to follow along. And if there is an issue, they, they solve it within that, uh, based on that code of conduct. Uh, so there are some examples of ethical dilemmas. For, for example, monitoring employees. Would you, uh, uh, do you think it is right, is right or not? Uh, so well, what, employers, for example, they do monitor their employees because they want to achieve higher productivity so they can keep your job for you, right? Uh, if you are more productive, they are going to keep you. But uh, and to do that, they want to make sure that they monitor you, right? Uh, at the same time, for you as an employee, you might need to use that computer or their system, uh, you know, to do to run a personal task very quickly. Uh, so is there a balance between this? Uh, so this is what we mean here by an ethical dilemma, monitoring employees. Facebook provides us useful information, but at the same time, it sells our information to advertisers. So uh, privacy, what we mean here by privacy, it refers to the, well, the right to be left alone, right? That's kind of the simple simple way to say it, uh, privacy refers to the right to be left alone without surveillance, without being monitored, and, and, and so on. So in the United States, we have privacy is protected uh, in the First Amendment, Fourth Amendment, additional uh, federal issue, uh, uh, federal uh, statutes. And uh, Europe and the United States use the fair information practices as the principle for their rules and privacy laws. So for example, in the United States, uh, we have uh, legislations called COPA, which is the Child Online Parental Permission Act. So children under 13, 13 years old, uh, if a company wants to collect data about children under 13 years old, then they need to have parental per, 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 uh, permission uh, or permission from the parents of those children. And then the Graham Lee Belayli Act. This act actually provides customers the right for their financial information protection or privacy of their financial information. HIPAA 
provides, uh, which is health information, provides a right to patient to have access to their information and how their information is going to be used. Right? So the FTC, uh, Federal Trade Commission, uses the fair information uh, practices principles, and uh, which includes requiring organizations to provide customers with notice or awareness uh, of how their information is going to be collected and how it is going to be used. And they also require organizations to provide choice and consent to uh, to to customers how their uh, how their information can be used. And uh, the majority of the time, we uh, when we get that pop up when we log into a new website or a new service, and then they give us this long list of of agreement, and we need to agree before we proceed because it's really long, and you need a law degree sometimes to understand what those, um, uh, you know, what this information tells us. Uh, so then. Also, access participation. This is where uh, organizations have to give the consumer the right or the customer the right to have access to their information and correct any uh, inaccurate information. Security organizations must provide uh, security measures to protect the privacy of customers um, from unauthorized parties. And then enforcement. Uh, they need to enforce the those those privacy. So the European Union has this uh, the EU General Data Protection Regulation, which is the strongest among all countries, uh, which gives customers the right to consent to uh, their to, to their distribution, collection, and sharing of their information, and it doesn't allow companies. Uh, that operate in Europe from outside Europe to uh, violate those rules. And so it enforces its rules to companies, European companies, as well as to non-European companies that operate in Europe. So, uh, and then they provide, and they, they have heavy fines. And those fines uh, are 4% of global daily revenue. Or to up to $20 million. So this is a very good question uh, you can think about. So the uh, GDPR has heavy fines that can be 4% of global daily revenue of that organization or company, or up to $20 million. So then uh, internet challenges to privacy which includes cookies. So cookies, basically they are text files that when you visit a website, that website or through the browser saves the text file on your hard drive and for your computer. And that text file tracks which websites you have visited, uh, where you, what you did, you know, uh, while you are using that computer. So in other words, it just uh, tracks your, your movement and visits. And and companies or websites, they use that. So they can, they claim that they want to provide you with better customer service so they can greet you with your name and provide you with uh, more targeted advertising that appeal to you. And then the second one is the web beacons or web bugs. So those are tiny graphics embedded in emails and web pages. Uh, basically they monitor who, who is reading email message uh, or visiting sites. So those are basically used by major companies like Google and Microsoft. They read your email and they they um, they sell this information to advertisers or marketers. And then there is the spyware. So spyware, mostly malware, uh, those are secretly installed on user's computer and they can track and transmit keystrokes from your computer. For example, when you're logged into your bank account, they can actually read your keystrokes, your, your username, your password, and all of that on their screen. Um, 
So then also Google services and behavioral targeting. So uh, Google has a, owns a company called AdSense, right? Um, and this is their, uh, or double, it used to be called Double Click. Now uh, they 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 own it. Google owns it. So when Google has more than eighty percent of users worldwide use Google for their search. So uh, that's why Google owned or acquired YouTube, so they can have a complete uh, uh, cycle or integration. Um, uh, about advertising, right? They they can track your searches when you go to their search engine, and then they can read your emails when you use their Gmail, and then they can also uh, see what you watch in YouTube, and they can provide you those advertising on YouTube so they can target market you there. So internet <clears throat> uh, challenges to privacy again here the United States allows businesses to gather transaction information without consent and also use this uh, information without consent again for other marketing purposes so this is why the United States uh, is privacy uh, is different from Europe right Europe is more more stringent so then we have opt-out versus opt-in model so what we mean here by opt-out uh, model is that by default, the organization or company will collect data about you and assume that you have given them a consent to collect data about you until you yourself ask them to opt out, to, to remove you from, from, you know, not to collect data about you, right? So this is what we mean by the opt-out model. So the opt-in model, on the other hand, is that you are not, they are not collecting data about you or they are they, they, they don't have a consent to collect data about you until you go on and approve uh, to that company and tell them, yes, I approve, please collect data about me, right? Uh, so online industry uh, promotes self-regulation over privacy legislation, um, but they still provide ambiguous privacy statements that requires a law degree uh, in order to understand it. And the majority of companies, they use the opt-out models over the opt-in. In other words, they their settings is they collect, they collect data about you until you go and change that setting to not collect data about you. So for example, your browsers, whatever browser you have, by default, it allows cookies and tracking um, until you go and opt out yourself, right? That's what we mean here by the opt-out model. Uh, online seals, some companies, they have online seals, which is like eTrust or so that shows that they, this company is has privacy regulations and principles. So technical solutions uh, that can help uh, improve privacy is the email encryption. So you can encrypt your email that way. Those companies can treat your email while it is in the middle or some uh, man in the middle attacks, for example, this is, uh, they can read your emails while it is on its way to, to the other person. Uh, anonymity tools, so anonymity tools includes the VPN or virtual private network. Um, Anti-spy weird, this is like McAfee and Norton uh, security software. So uh, other things that you can use is the browser features like private browsing, do not track options. Let me take you through those steps, how to, you can do that. So for example, if you uh, you are using my uh, uh, Outlook. You can go to options and then from options, you can click on encrypt, right? So now this one will be encrypted. What do we mean here by encrypted? Uh, by encryption, in other words, means if someone opens that other than the one that you, you intended to send it to, they will see like chicken scratches, you know, those uh, Chinese characters uh, with numbers and so on. Nobody can read anything out of it. 
So that's what we mean by encrypted um, encryption. Um, so this is one way to do it, is to encrypt your email when you send it. That way, nobody can read it, read um, that email or content. So um, private browsing. So private browsing, you can do that uh, internally, but still, uh, company, still companies will be able to track what you have been doing. But this is one way to do it. Uh, new incognito window. So you can see here, and it tells you exactly what. So this one will will not show your browsing history, and cookies and sites, and but again, you still be visible to websites you visit, your employer or school, your internet service provider. So this is what we mean here by uh, incognito. This is you know if you want to use a website that, and you don't want it to show in your in your uh, in your history, for example. Uh, History, I can see it. Browsing history, where is my history? Browsing, yeah, because here I can see browsing history because I'm incognito. But if I go here, then I can see my history. It will tell me which websites I have visited and so on, right? Um, and then another example here is do not track options. So browsers, they should have an option. So I'm using the Chrome project uh, uh, browser. So you can go to settings and then you go privacy and security and then cookies and other sites. And you can select here, do not track request with your browsing traffic, right? And this is just some of the, of the ways where you can go and opt out, right? So by default, they are collecting that information about us, but you can do the opt out. All right, so uh, property rights um, includes tangible and tangible products and uh, some of the protected in four main ways. So uh, copyright, so copyright includes books, written, music, uh, movies, and I just have to name a few, right? And this copyright, the individual is entitled to copyright for their lifelong of their life and plus uh, 70 years after they, uh, after they died. And companies have uh, property right for up to 95 years, right? And then for patents, patents refer to if you have an invention that you register, like uh, for example, Amazon invented that one click um, feature <clears throat> online. <clears throat> so that's considered a patent, right? So patents, they, you will have exclusive right to that patent for up to, to 20 years, right? For 20 years, then if you wanna share that patent, you can get royalties, right? And no problem. And then trademarks, this is what we mean by like, like examples of it is symbols. Uh, for example, the Apple symbol, you know, an apple that it has a bite on it or Mercedes symbol, um, right? Icon or Google icon. Those are some examples of the trademarks that um, people can have the right for that trademark. Nobody can use this for, for their own, create their own company with that, with that icon, right? So the trade secrets here includes uh, formulas. For example, uh, uh, the formula for Pepsi, right? That's an example of a trade secret. So challenges to intellectual property rights. Now with the digital media, it makes it easier for applications of movies and videos or, or songs, ease of transmission, because now we have the internet, ease of alteration, and, and, and just gonna have to name a few. So we have this Digital Millennial Copyright Act. This is an international agreement to, um, to uh, enforce copyright. Copyrights, uh, you know, uh, that means fighting piracy, software piracy, or any uh, piracy in general, right? For videos or movies and so on and downloading, downloading those um, illegally for free. 
So uh, one thing that I wanted to emphasize here in this in this slide is the principal uh, sources of poor system performance can include software bugs or errors. So the the the, the word bugs actually. Uh, and uh, how it was introduced in software is in the 50s, there was a big supercomputer and, and then it, it stopped working and they tried to find out why it was not working until they found a real bug, right? A real bug in that computer. When they removed that bug from the computer, it started working. Since then, they have been saying a bug is an error, uh, especially in codes. So for example, you have been writing SQL codes. If you write a code that doesn't work, then it has a bug in it, right? There is maybe a misspelling or something wrong, right? Uh, so we call that a bug. And then to fix that bug, we call it debugging. So uh, that was all that I wanted to cover with you today. But one thing that I wanted to bring to your attention is that I have, I have provided you with uh, extra credit discussion. Um, and this extra credit uh, discussion, you will need to answer those questions, and it is optional. So it's going to be worth one credit, uh, uh, one credit, uh, one point that will be added to your quiz. Even let's say that you got uh, 10, 10 out of ten in the quiz. Still, I'm going to add that one extra point you got from here, so you will get eleven out of ten in your quiz, right? And then uh, you might ask how many, is there a word count? No, there is no restrictions in terms of word count for uh, the discussion. Do we need to reply to any posts? No, you don't need to respond to reply to any posts. Uh, what about the deadline? So the deadline is going to be the end of that week. So for example, whenever that project for that week is due, this will be due, right? Uh, just to make it uh, easier. Yeah, and then um, if there is any other questions you have, uh, please let me know. And again, for, for I mentioned in, in class as well that the quizzes from now on uh, are going to go are gonna are going to be based on what I cover in the lecture. So uh, Blackboard, actually in the past, they helped me to set up the quiz and they used the, the publisher's test bank, and they also decided to do the webcam and all of that. So I'm gonna use still use the webcam and respond as, as they suggested, but I'm going to create the quizzes myself based on what I cover in the class. So that way you uh, watch this lecture, you take notes, because some of the content that I, I discuss in the in the slide, they are not in the slide. So um, take notes while you are uh, going through the lecture. That way you do well in the, in the quiz. <clears throat> That's all that I wanted to cover today and I will see you uh, next time.